Among the great motivators, authors and sages of our modern times stands Dr. Joseph Murphy, who wrote over 30 books that have turned millions of lives around towards positive living. He was a major figure in a movement that swept the world to create a self-healing, motivational and inspirational industry that includes well-known personalities such as Dale Carnegie, Napoleon Hill, Norman Vincent Peale, Tony Robbins, Zig Ziglar, Earl Nightingale and many others well-known motivational speakers of our era found inspiration and truth in Joseph Murphy's work. Millions of people listened to his daily radio broadcast and his lectures and sermons were read and attended by thousands. What exactly did he teach? What were his core messages? And where did it all come from? Why were so many people attracted to his message? On this video, we examine the life of this prodigy of humanity and his top five principles and why you should listen to them. At number five, we learn about the mind and the subconscious mind. To quote directly from his book, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, Joseph says, the law of your mind is the law of belief and quotes from the Bible, a passage from Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which shall he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. But is this really true? What does it mean to move a mountain by mere words of faith? Is this a religious thing? Here, Joseph Murphy tells us that it is a matter of employing the powers of our mind, powers which we are all endowed with from our Creator and that we often ignore. In chapter two of his book, Joseph states, you have a mind and you should learn how to use it. He goes on to explain the duality of mind, the conscious and subconscious and how they work together. Let us listen to him for a few seconds on how the subconscious always accepts your commands without question. Another important point to remember is that your subconscious mind always accepts the dominant of two ideas. That is, it accepts your conviction without question whether your premise is true or absolutely false. The working principle here, that of the subconscious mind, is first attributed to the famous psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud, who, around 1893, described those impulses and associations that we are not aware of and yet are part of our daily lives as the result of the action of the subconscious mind. What tells your heart when to beat? How do the lungs know when to breathe? Isn't this untapped power worth a few minutes of your time? Keep on watching to learn how Joseph Murphy masterfully taught with practical examples how to use the inner workings of the subconscious mind to transform your life in that which you desire. At number four is the power of the subconscious mind. Where does this power come from and how does it work? What is the relationship between God and the subconscious mind? Joseph spoke multiple times of how the subconscious has access to all the wealth and all the resources of the universe. He equated this power to God. Let us listen in his own words what he said about this power. It stands to reason that any time you discover the creative power, you have discovered God, as there is only one creative power. Not two, three or a thousand, just one. Joseph was a powerful preacher with a unique voice that attracted the audience and made them listen. But his life and learning were quite intriguing as well. He was born in Ireland as the son of a private boys school headmaster and raised as a Roman Catholic and later on joined the Jesuits order. It is a well-known fact that the average Jesuit priest is highly educated, as the Jesuits' discipline for study is quite rigorous. However, this was not sufficient for Joseph, who questioned the Catholic orthodoxy and withdrew from the seminary. In 1922, he travelled to America on the RMS Cedric from Liverpool and joined the Church of the Healing Christ, where Emmett Fox was a minister. 
He traveled the world and went on to learn other religions, such as Hinduism, and in the 1940s, moved to Los Angeles and ordained into religious science, continuing to expand his religious, spiritual, and scientific education from multiple cultures and sources. Joseph also became associated with the Masonic Order and rose to the 32nd degree in the Scottish Rite. The 18th degree of the Masons' teachings exposes its members to the secret teachings of the Rosicrucians, another group who for centuries have taught about the power of the subconscious mind and the principles at work within all of us that can help us achieve wealth, health and happiness. Keep listening to this video to learn more about this and discover the hidden message at the end of this video. At number three is the power of the subconscious to help us achieve health. Joseph spoke at length about the healing power of our mind. He illustrated his sermons with quotes from the Bible and examples from ancient cultures. In one of his speeches, Joseph tells us about the actual experience with a young man who had become mentally unbalanced, believing in evil spirits. Let's listen in his own words, tell us the story. A few years ago, a young man from a local university came to see me with the complaint that he was constantly hearing spirit voices, that they made him do nasty things, and that they would not let him alone. Neither would they permit him to read the Bible or other spiritual books. He was convinced that he was talking to supernatural beings. This young man was clairaudient, not knowing that all men possess this faculty to some degree, he began to think it was due to evil spirits. His superstitious beliefs caused him to ascribe it to departed spirits. Through constant worry, he became a monomaniac on the subject. His subconscious mind dominated and controlled by an all-potent but false suggestion, gradually took over control and mastery of his objective faculties, and his reason abdicated its throne. He was what you would call mentally unbalanced, as are all men who allow their false beliefs to obtain the ascendancy. I explained to this university student that his subconscious mind is of tremendous importance and significance, that it can be influenced negatively and positively, but he had to make sure that he influenced it only positively, constructively, and harmoniously. The subconscious mind possesses transcendent powers, but it is at the same time amenable to good and bad suggestions. The explanation which I gave him made a profound impression on him. I gave him the following written prayer, which he was to repeat for 10 or 15 minutes, three or four times a day. God's love, peace, harmony, and wisdom flood my mind and heart. I love the truth, I hear the truth, and I know the truth. I know God is love, and his love surrounds me, enfolds me, and enwraps me. God's river of peace floods my mind, and I give thanks for my freedom. He repeated this prayer slowly, quietly, reverently, and with deep feeling, particularly prior to sleep. By identifying himself with harmony and peace, he brought about a rearrangement of the thought patterns and imagery of his mind. And a healing followed. He brought about a healing of the mind by repetition of these truths, coupled with faith and expectancy. Modern psychology has demonstrated in multiple occasions that what the mind believes can translate into actual physical effects. In modern industry, it is a well-known fact that improper jokes and pranks at the wrong moment can cost lives because of what people can believe. One example of such industry is where labourers work with hot tar, a dangerous material to handle. A joke of someone throwing cold water on the back of a fellow worker while at the same time calling hot tar can cause severe scalding and blistering in the back of the recipient. In another example, a person under hypnosis is told that he or she will be touched by a hot red iron. Then the person is touched by just a pencil and the result is that a blister will appear in the skin where the person was touched just by the pencil. Why then does the body react to something that is not true with actual physiological changes? Because the subconscious is under control of the body, and the subconscious does not argue against what the conscious mind commands. Once the mind has told the subconscious what it is, then the subconscious obeys without question. 
If your mind believes it, then the subconscious will act. Keep on watching for the next topic from Joseph Murphy. At number two is the power of the subconscious to help you achieve wealth. Joseph tells us that the universe has made available to us all that we need to live well and prosper. Yet, somehow, we have been educated that being poor is okay and seeking wealth is not. This is contrary to nature and the supreme intelligence which wants to supply us with all of our needs and more. Joseph calls it the invisible law of opulence. And to achieve it, all we need to do is educate our minds to harmonize with the cosmic generosity of the supreme intelligence. Let's hear it from his own voice. In other words, there's supreme intelligence that responds to your conscious thinking and imagery. Pray for divine guidance, therefore, in all your ways. As you make a habit of this attitude of mind, you will find the invisible law of opulence can and will produce visible riches for you. This is far from a new concept. We have heard it from the sages of the past before. All wealth is available to who those that align with God. King Solomon is known for his riches and the Bible explains that he asked for wisdom and the riches were given in addition I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that no king shall compare with you all your days. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 13. It is not a coincidence that the king of the Hebrews attended the same mystery schools of ancient Egypt, where many of the highest, most renowned philosophers of the past also learned their wisdom and went on to form their own schools, such as Pythagoras of Samos, who established a school in Croton. King Salomon is said to be the founder of the Masons, from whom the modern Masonic order inherited their tradition, and the school where Joseph Murphy was a high initiate of their mysteries and knowledge. In his explanation of the power of affirmations, Joseph gives us the key to wisdom that he inherited from the sages of the past. He is, in fact, passing on to us that which the Egyptians inscribed in the tombs of their pharaohs, and that have come down to us as curses and spells. They are the laws of how the mind works, why controlling your inner voice and what you say to your subconscious is the secret of the sages of the past that can help in the present. At number one is the law of attraction. Joseph tells us that all we desire is already there, just like a drop of water is not the ocean, but the drop of water contains what the ocean has, so it is with the law of attraction. We must tune our minds and thoughts in order to see the forest behind the trees. Let us listen to his own words about attracting that which we desire. This means that you must order your mind and thoughts to conform to the age-old truth that whatever you are seeking already subsists in the infinite mind. It's already there. All you have to do is to identify mentally and emotionally with your desire, idea, plan or purpose, realizing it is as real as your hand or heart. One of the most notable personalities of the 20th century was Albert Einstein. His brain is still under study by science, who is trying to understand how his mind worked. It is said that Albert Einstein was capable of visualizing in his mind a fully working machine and make each of the gears, components and pistons of such machine work in harmony for days on. His power of visualization was tremendous and this was the key to his creativity and genius. Joseph tells us that we can achieve wisdom, attract wealth and happiness, and anything we dream of, if we only dream of it. So, what is the hidden message of this video, which you have so faithfully watched to the end? It is a statement from one of the greatest sages of the past, Hermes Trismegistus. In his tomb was found the emerald table that contained his secrets. Sir Isaac Newton, the modern father of physics, and also the top director of Rosicrucians of his time, translated this table and found this key sentence. That which is below is like that which is above, and that which is above is like that which is below, to do the miracles of one only thing. 
As we come to the end of our video, we hope that you have enjoyed learning about Joseph Murphy and the timeless principles that he taught. If you did, please give us a like and drop us a comment. Let us know what you would like to see next. Don't forget to subscribe and be notified by our next video. Morongo TV. Motivation. Inspiration. Fun.